Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Steve Droskowski. <laughs> Thank you, Merle, and thank you, Zach. Great job, Zach. Thank all of you for being here today. And thank you for sitting through this long and arduous process. Thank you for going to caucus and bringing forward the leadership that we need in order to win this election. In order to win it, not just by a little, but overwhelmingly. The wet, red wave that is growing is gonna be what we need to take Minnesota back again, to make Minnesota free again. I grew, I grew up a farm boy in, in west central Wisconsin across the river from Winona. I learned the, the values of hard work, honesty, common sense, and personal responsibility. And those are the values that carry with me today and each and every day when I represent you in the Minnesota House of Representatives. I'm humbled and honored by your, the trust that you have placed in me to do that. And it's that same type of effort that I'm going to bring forward on your behalf as your next state senator in Senate District 20. Now you might ask, well, what are the most important things that you need to look for in a candidate? You know, um, for instance, uh, one of the things that people look for is which one can do the, which one can win the biggest. Okay, so I can tell you that I have worked in campaigns for 14 years in this state, from the northern part of the state to the southern part of the state, to South Dakota, to Wisconsin, 33 different candidates that I helped get elected to Minnesota House or the Minnesota Senate, including helping my opponent uh, several years back. We need to work as a team. I am the person who has worked as a team to help people get the job done and bring us the outcomes that we need in St. Paul. So, electability is the first one. Strong amount of the vote, 66% of the vote in my last election, 54 precincts, won them all. And we need to have somebody who can campaign on. Second thing, somebody who's gonna stick true to our values. Somebody who's not gonna come and just talk the talk, and then go talk to this group over here and do something different. And then go to that group back there, in the House of Representatives or the US or the Minnesota Senate and vote different. Right. We don't need a candidate who's going to talk like us and vote with them. Yeah. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, I'm that candidate. Uh, if you look at the conservative scores from the Legislative Evaluation Assembly, I lead the Minnesota House and the Minnesota Senate there. Uh, in 14 years, I've gotten the award 10 times. Somebody who is going to do what they said they're going to do. And I've done that, and I'll do it again in the Minnesota Senate. The third thing, somebody who has the courage of their convictions to do the right thing. My mother always said, it's never the wrong time to do the right thing. And if you look at some of the things I've done. I've gone after the fraud and corruption of Ilhan Omar to have her call me all kinds of names. And I stood in there every, each and every time. And I can tell you, when we win the US Congress next, next year, I've already talked to our, I already talked to Tom Emmer. My complaint in front of the, in front of the US Office on Congressional Ethics against Ilhan Omar and her five different frauds and perjury that she did, they're going to be heard. Yeah. The work that I did on stamping out, identifying, exposing, and eventually stamping out voter fraud in Minneapolis. Remember Levon Mohammed? 300 ballots in the car. 
I turned it over to the FBI and Project Veritas as soon as it was given to me. And I can tell you, I talked to my friends in Minneapolis last week, 200 people who voted are receiving subpoenas. They receive subpoenas. The grand jury hearing was just this last week. Some of the people who were in the grand jury hearing said, well, I have never voted. I didn't vote. Of course, they were registered, they had voted. One, one person said, well, I couldn't have voted. I was in Kenya. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, the indictments are coming. So the last thing I want to mention in this area of courage is something that I did in the Minnesota House last year. We brought forward, I brought forward an amendment. We had a leader in the Minnesota House who worked for a multinational, or, or a DC lobbying firm that took money on behalf of multinational corporations to influence legislation in all 50 states, including Minnesota. My amendment says, if you are a legislator, you can't be a lobbyist. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this was not a Democrat. This was a Republican. Yeah. And that is what we have to do, the courage to do the right thing. It passed the House, passed the Senate, and sent to the governor. It's now law. It will not happen again. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a lot of work to do. Join me, join us, as we work to bring forward the changes on all of our issues. You've seen my communications. We are gonna work and build the biggest team the Senate District has ever seen. We already got 50 volunteers. We're gonna have 100 or 150 by the time we get to summer. And we're gonna blanket this district, and we're gonna do everything we can to not just win this seat and the two house seats here, but win the governorship, and when we do, we're going to pass our conservative agenda, not be afraid of it, approach it with courage, be proud of what we're doing, and we're going to make Minnesota free again.